Okay, um, I'm going to start the meeting now. Um, uh, usually better organized, but I've had some displacement issues, and then uh, even our uh, other person up here has had displacement issues, uh, and so we're not as organized as we normally are. Um, so, uh, yes, you're right there. Okay, so my name is Michael. Uh, uh, yes. My name is Michael Nolte, and I'm the uh, executive director of Alliance for a Better District 6, and this is what we call a stakeholder meeting. Uh, the Alliance has been around since 1999, and it is a district-wide um, um, planning organization for the neighborhood of protection the whole district. And uh, we review projects, uh, among other things. Uh, and uh, you know, it's a stakeholder meeting because we actually have several sponsors of this uh, meeting. Uh, uh, is out on the agenda, which are the uh, Alliance for a Better District 6, uh, the Alexander Tents Association, which is the, uh, the building here, is the Alexander, uh, the, the North American Business Association, the Tents Association of Coalition of San Francisco, and um, the Tuck Market has, has provided us with some drinks. Uh, and so what we do is, of course, go around the room real quickly and uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, so I'll start with Dennis Eisner and the Office of the Alliance. Phillips, President, Land Use Chair, Public Safety Chair, Parliamentarian, Legislative Analyst, and I live on the 12th floor. Uh, Daryl Honda, President of San Francisco Board of Appeals. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm in here. Design of this type of consulting. I'm going to admit as a tenant here, also part of the ERCA board, which is a tenant zone, uh, East Business and Community Association. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm Susan Bryan, and I'm... Uh, Behind the camera at all times. Hi. Hopefully, yes. Okay. Let's look at the dog. That's Susan Bryan's <laughs> finger that's blocking the camera. Oh, no, that's, that's a thumb. Introducing yourself, Susan? Susan Bryan, I'm videographer, I live in the neighborhood, and I'm treasurer of Alliance for Better District 6. Uh, hi, I'm Curtis Bradford, um, president of the East Tenderloin Residents Association, TNDC Board of Directors, Tenderloin People's Congress, uh, Market Street for the Masses Steering Committee, and the 950 Market Street Coalition. And the dog is? This is Maggie May. Okay, just want to include everybody. Okay. My name's Otto. I live next door. I saw Dennis walking in here, and I thought, gee, maybe I should see where Dennis is going. Okay. Robert, uh, Kellen. Okay. I'm Rachel Turner, and I'm with uh, 469 Eddy Street and 555 Golden Gate. Uh, I'm Nick Cranmer. I'm also with 469 Eddy Street and 555 Golden Gate. Okay. Um, so, uh, basically, we have we have ground rules. I didn't get a chance to put them on the back of our agenda, but basically what our ground rules are is uh, uh, since we are video taped, taping, uh, we have to make to respect the uh, with the presenters and not try to interrupt people and uh, 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 ask a lot of questions where you're hogging the time on the, on the camera kind of thing. Uh, no hissing, no booming. Uh, you have to include all that good stuff. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, when there's food, not to hog the food. Um, and, uh, and then try to ask questions relevant to what's on the agenda so that uh, um, there could be given an answer versus uh, you know, the person presenter may not know the answer to the question you're asking, which is you know, it's not related. Now, uh, the next item we have is uh, adoption of the agenda. I heard that some. Okay. Um, I second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, is there any additions or anything? Okay. All those in favor to adopting the agenda? Uh, just say uh, aye. Aye. Any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. Motion passes. Um, um, Susan, you have to get up. Uh, the, the membership committee uh, always asks our uh, members to. One of the ways the organization runs is two ways: is a membership uh, memberships, and then there's our donations at our um, at our um, 
meetings because uh, we're not an agency. We don't uh, have any other funding stream. And uh, Activity was um, back in October 2014 at the planning department. 
Um, and then we continue to kind of outreach with the, the nearby neighbors, so Monster Company, TNDC, the Tenderloin Housing Clinic. Um, we presented before the San Francisco Housing Action Coalition um, last December, so a, a year ago. Um, and they have endorsed the project, um, giving it a 4.5 out of 5, out of five um, based on these various um, qualities that they measure. So land use, density, affordability, things like that. Um, we've had two community meetings with TNDC um, at the building across the street from 4, uh, 469 Eddy Street. Um, most recently, the um, we had a meeting on, in January. Um, so we'll continue to conduct outreach. Uh, we're reaching out to, to all the neighbors again, as well as reaching out to, to a few uh, new organizations, um, such as yourselves um, at this time. Um, our timeline for the project, so the project was issued a, a CAT 32 exemption. Um, so we're now moving forward to um, planning commission um, in, in May. So, uh, once that, that's complete, um, we foresee um, starting construction probably um, later this year or early next year. Who's your planner? Uh, the planner is Tina Chang. And the environmental planner is, um, and that's not Billy, it's uh, Justin, Justin Horner. Do you have any questions on this project specifically? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so how many uh, buildings have you made to be uh, factory? How many is it And how many trips uh, back to that track do you propose for? Sorry, I didn't hear the last part. How much outreach have you done? Right. And yeah. what's the other part? And how, and how do you have to act uh, the people uh, that have kept the year to propose a lot of the people that's going on? You said you can get How many actual people, people has he actually met with? Um, yes. Yeah, so um, at the, our first community meeting, we had, um, I believe, probably five. It was at the planning department. Um, we've held meetings with PNDC and Tenderloin um, Housing Clinic um, directly. Um, our latest community meeting that was held across the street um, had 20 to 25 people. Um, most of those were residents of, of TNDC apartment buildings, um, as well as the, was, yeah, the West Tenderloin Resident Community Association was, was present. Um, and they provided a letter with their comments um, that we've responded to. And we're currently talking to TNDC um, you know, about how we can um, mitigate impacts from construction and such. Since their building is adjacent to ours, as well as they have a building across the street. So when you say you met with the Tenderloin Housing Clinic, you only met with uh, you meet with residents of Tenderloin Housing Clinic. Correct. With the agency. Correct. Yeah. <coughs> then, uh, I'm sorry. With Moser, you did. You only met again with the Moser. You didn't Correct. With residents. Correct. So as part of the planning process, <coughs> um, a notice is sent out to all residents, um, you know, as you move through the process. So for our first community meeting, a letter went out to all residents, I think within a, I guess, 300, 300, 300 square foot, or 300 uh, foot radius. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as the project has moved through plan the planning department, um, it's noticed. So um, initially, uh, when the when a, an environmental evaluation application is filed, um, we'll send out a notice. Um, when it's complete, a notice goes out, um, as well as, you know, when, uh, prior to a planning commission hearing, um, we'll send out notices, um, letting residents know that um, they're welcome to come. Um, uh, how many informed will you make to your planning? So, um, we're, uh, all of our units, our, our VMR requirement is met on site, so we're proposing three um, below market rate units on site. Um, they're four cell condo units, so that's 90% of area median income um, qualifying requirement. Um, and the, the, the city's uh, mayor's office of housing um, controls the, the sale of those units. Are there going to be condos? Condos, yes. And you don't know? You haven't decided who the management company is, and you don't know uh, how much the, uh, um, the uh, management piece would be, or the, the association fees. There, there would be an HOA, a homeowners association, right. um, that would manage the building. And I don't know, what are typical fees in these projects? Um, we haven't dedicated an um, HOA manager yet. Um, we'll probably do that after, uh, after the planning commission. We have a better idea when we're getting closer to construction. 
Um, the HOA do um, in past projects, they ranged from uh, $300 to uh, up to five or six hundred dollars. And parking yeah. spaces, uh, eight parking spaces. Is that a month? I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just curious with the uh, prices of the, the non DMR units. Like, what, what price range are you targeting? Uh, I mean, they're, they're market rate, so I mean, well, I mean the price it, depends it's on. It's a wide range. Like, who are you building for? In, in theory, who are you building for? What basic in the, income? In the past, um, a lot of our uh, buyers have been first time buyers. Um, these are not highly amenitized buildings. Um, they don't have doormen. There's uh, not a private lounge. So um, generally, we have a lot of first time buyers. So, no idea around what price range you're talking about? We haven't really said anything yeah. yet. Yeah. So, the idea of condos. Got to give you a, kind of a great picture sense of this building that they built in the tenant line, condos and living halls, and those considered to be uh, affordable. And then the ones that uh, are 12% is going into the buildings that would be affordable, and affordable to the ones to make the next, the next high the next, the lower the next level, which is probably 90%. So, if you mean 90, well, no, I'm sorry. So he uh, just pointed out they're going to be. Um, he just pointed out that they're uh, going to be market rate, so it has nothing to do with the, uh, how much well, income. Is. Yes, it does. Um, yes, um, well, then the, the, we have the three BMR yeah. units on site. Um, the BMR units, right? Based on like income qualifying, yes. So that's that's through the mayor's office of housing, and so typically it's. I, I, I think oh, if it's a one-person household, it's like sixty-five thousand. If it's two-person, it goes up, you know, up to ninety percent of very median income. I think for a four person house. So what the BMR is basically set at 30% of the So what the mayor's office of housing considers is the average um, income level um, is what uh, the price is based upon. Condos, they're a little bit more into the uh, figuring them out, but it's still based on. Uh, Correct, yeah. So they essentially they, they take, uh, you have to income qualify, and then they, they assume that you 30% of your income would go toward housing, and then they divide that by 12 months, and they figure out essentially, you know, what, what you could afford to pay as um, part of a, like a mortgage, let's say. So I guess maybe my next question, because it's not talk, what are the amenities for the building besides um, just, just, the, just the rooftop deck, um, and then the, 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 the commercial space. Um, which, you know, it's, it's undecided yet, you know, so what that'll no be. Court, there's no courtyard, but no, 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 I mean, uh, so no balconies, uh, no trees. So there are, there are a few units that have um, private open space, which you can see here in the rear. A couple have decks, and then there's a, a planted um, planter in the back, and then in the front there are two units that have decks with a planter. And then on the first level, these front units actually have decks as well. Um, I don't have that floor plan. Um, this is just a difficult one. And how many units are there? 28. What's your green status? I'm sorry? What's your green status? Uh, the green status? Uh, it's uh, green points? Yeah, we'll be meeting um, the green points. We won't be leaving. Uh, that'll be our certification company, Platinum, but um, we'll be meeting green points. Okay. Okay. Um, and will the units have that they're on washer and dryer? Um, yes, I believe. We've, yeah, program for yeah every unit have a washer dryer. So, and will there be any uh, bicycle park? There will be. It's on the ground floor, so it's one to one um, and class one, and then um, there'll be uh, two class two bike uh, parking spaces on the, the street. So I don't know what was class two. Mean? Class two is just the, so the bike the racks zone? on the bike racks oh, on the street. So, so there's no white zone. Right? Uh, no, yeah, no white zone. Okay, because then we say, we put it there. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that, that was yeah. a special parking, I didn't know what that was. Yeah, the planning department requires you to have two types of bicycle parking. Um, okay. Um, anybody else have questions? Oh, uh, uh, this building's in that community benefits district. Yeah. Can we do that in that the owners are going to have to pay that, that assessment every year? Uh, as, as part of the property tax? Yeah, so that'll be passed on to the, to the, the owners of the, of the development. 
you know, I'm not sure um, what that calculation is. I think it's probably de de determined based on the square footage of the building, um, frontage, and such. 